love is in the air. Whether it be romantic or platonic, it is Valentine's Day, a day to celebrate all types of love, including the love that you have for the fictional characters in your life. Now, I am somebody who considers myself a romantic. What's five plus five? Because you're the only 10 I see. And because of that, I've always been extremely drawn to romantic relationships between characters in video games or the romantic relationships that you as a player can have with those characters. Sometimes to maybe a bit of an extreme extent, <laughs> but I think we all have. Whenever we have a character that we really admire or find attractive for some reason, I don't think it's an unusual experience for us to be like, oh. And for me, that's happened certainly more than once in my life. And that is what we are going to talk about on this very special Valentine's Day video. <laughs> Hi everybody, my name is Alex aka Quality and welcome or welcome back to the channel. So I've been wanting to do a video like this for a while and I figured saving it for Valentine's Day would be the best way to go about it. Video game crushes are something, it, it's a topic that means a lot to me. I think it's really interesting to see how one person's taste in video game characters might have changed from when you were a kid to an adult or just the reasons behind some of these crushes. Some may make sense, some might not. And that's all right too. So I'm going to go through some of my biggest crushes. Like, do not let this list of seven characters think I've only ever loved these seven characters. No, this list could go on and on forever. And like, I, we this video wouldn't end if I talked about every video game character I have ever been attracted to throughout my life, but I had to narrow it down. So yeah, it'll be interesting kind of going through my tastes and the things that I felt and did because of these feelings for these fictional characters. But that's not all. This is actually a question that I love asking people because I think it's very telling of a person. And so I took the question, who are your video game crushes to the YouTube community tab, Twitter, as well as a few other aspects of social media and you all delivered. <laughs> I had so many submissions and I figured, hey, let's add some of those right at the end of the video so we can talk about your crushes as well. But that has to wait because right now we're talking about me. If I had to think of one of my earliest video game crushes and probably one of the most impactful for multiple reasons, it would have to be Cliff from Harvest Moon, more Friends of Mineral Town. Frankly, I could make an entire video just about Harvest Moon marriage candidates, which I think I might do. So if, if you wanna see that, let me know. I, I'd really love to know for sure if that's something you're interested in. So more Friends of Mineral Town was my first Harvest Moon game of all time. So I have some really, really special memories with it. I remember seeing it in Toys R Us one day and having a vague memory thinking that my older cousins had it. I knew I had to have it. They did not own this game, but for some reason it looked like something they would have. So I begged and my mom got it and thus started a decades-long obsession with the Harvest Moon Story of Season series. When I played Mineral Town for the very first time, I was amazed! I was so excited to start my own farm, get all these animals, and meet all of the characters in Mineral Town. However, one lonesome boy stood out to me more than the rest. His name? Cliff. He was a little dirty, he had kind of like a potato sack bag vest, and he had a ponytail, which I don't know why that was such a big draw at the time, but oh man, it was. <laughs> Not only that, he was very sad. Something stirred in my little eight-year-old heart at that point in time. This poor boy can't be sad. He's, he's cute. He's not allowed to be sad. And so I made it my sole mission in Friends of Mineral Town to make this guy happy and in the process fall in love with me. Aside from my farm duties, I spent every waking hour trying to figure out Cliff's favorite items, just seeing how I could get closer to him and maybe inspire him to just be a little happier and turn his life around. He was a traveler and he didn't really have much going on for him. And then eventually, once raising his heart level enough, giving him enough presence, he got a job. And I felt so accomplished because I knew, I knew, that he wouldn't have gotten there if it were not for me. I helped him. I made him happy. And thus, this began a long-standing favorite trope of mine, the Fix Me Boy. Now, what is a Fix Me Boy, you might ask? Well, 
a fix me boy is a type of character, namely male in this case, that might be a little sad for the main part of the story, they might have some unresolved trauma that they're trying to hide, or they're not trying to hide that unresolved trauma. And it's up to you as the character to make them happy once again. This, unfortunately, is one of my favorite tropes of romanceable characters. I know, it's bad, it's toxic, I can't help it. <laughs> I cannot help it. <laughs> and it all started with Cliff, but that's not where this story ends. So being young, I didn't totally understand how the heart system worked in Friends of Mineral Town or Harvest Moon in general. How it worked in this specific game is you had hearts next to the character portraits for each character that you could romance. Those hearts would then range from the colors of magenta to red. Red being the absolute highest in the point where you could finally propose with a blue feather. Me, having a magenta heart with Cliff, thought I must be close to marriage. I mean, that's only like one color off from red. I didn't realize that it went the other way on, on the rainbow. So then Cliff got a blue heart. I was devastated. I didn't know what I had done. I had continued to give him presents, saw the heart events that I had available, visited him every day, followed behind him in town whenever he walked around. And yet he had a blue heart? Well, blue is the color of sad. That doesn't make any sense. Why does he hate me now? Did I do something wrong? So I thought, Maybe I should play hard to get. Maybe I'm being overly romantic with Cliff and maybe I need to back off a little bit. Maybe give some items to other townsfolk and try to get their friendship points up and just make other friends. You know, maybe we just need some time apart. One morning before school, I checked my game after, you know, ignoring Cliff for a little bit longer, giving gifts to other bachelors, trying to make him jealous. And I found that he was about to marry Anne, my rival in love for Cliff. I was devastated. How could that turn around so quickly? What happened? What, like, I don't understand. I told my mom I couldn't go to school that day. I wasn't feeling very well. I couldn't show my face in public after such embarrassment. That entire morning I sat in bed weeping, having my Game Boy Advance SP in my hands, running around town in distress, listening to Ashley Tisdale breakup songs on my iPod shuffle, and I couldn't take it anymore. I was crushed, I was devastated, I had to make Cliff realize he made a mistake. And thus, I started to romance the doctor, and the exact same thing happened because I still had not learned anything about the heart event system. So yeah, my very first video game crush was pretty drastic. Eventually, I did end up marrying Cliff, and it was pretty fantastic. He's a really good romanceable character, definitely still my favorite from Mineral Town, 100%. Yes, because of the trope, but I also just like him as a character, he's very sweet. But Cliff definitely set the precedence for the type of video game characters that I would be interested in throughout the rest of my life. And as my very first one, he's a very memorable one. However, my second big video game crush isn't even like the same type of character. Next, we have Steven Stone from Pokemon Emerald. Steven was just so cool when you see him in the cave for the first time. After visiting Rustboro City, you know you're supposed to find this guy named Steven in a cave. And for some reason, I just thought that introduction was so romantic. Meeting this silver haired cool guy in a cave, I don't know. What a better date spot, am I right? But yeah, Steven Stone was definitely a stark contrast to Cliff. Where Cliff, I felt like I needed to take care of him. Steven Stone felt like he was gonna take care of me. Now, we don't really see Steven too much throughout Pokemon Emerald, unlike in Ruby and Sapphire where he's the champion, Wallace is instead the champion in Emerald, and you get to battle Steven way later in the game. But every time we crossed paths in Pokemon Emerald, I just remember getting this flutter in my heart like, oh, I hope he knows I'm doing well, I hope, I hope he knows that I'm becoming a better trainer and that I'm growing and stuff. Like, I really hope he notices me. And uh, he, he didn't because there's not any really romantic system in Pokemon, nor should there be, but, but in my brain, I thought I was making a great impression on Steven. However, as I got closer towards the end of the game, I knew 
I was gonna have to battle him at some point in time. I had heard friends talk about it. I knew it was on the horizon. And I refused to go to that point because I was like, I can't, what if I lose? I'm gonna embarrass myself in front of this guy. This is ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. I still ended up doing it. And then after he left, I felt this like emptiness, this true, true emptiness that I didn't, I, I just couldn't describe. And then I put Pokemon Emerald down for a really long time because I was like, what am I- Steven's not here anymore, so what's the point? <laughs> Despite it being my beyond favorite Pokemon game in the entire series, I loved Steven Stone, and at the end when it was just like, alright, all interactions are done, I was so crushed. I was so crushed. Next up is our second Harvest Moon character, and this is from Harvest Moon DS Cute. Now, Harvest Moon DS Cute was my first Harvest Moon game on the DS, and I was super excited. It brought back characters from Another Wonderful Life, which was a big favorite of mine, but the marriage candidates as playing as a girl were not super great, even with the expanded roster of DS Cute. But the cool thing about DS Cute and Harvest Moon DS is you could put Friends of Mineral Town or more Friends of Mineral Town, depending on the version you were playing, in your GBA slot so that way all of the characters from Mineral Town would come and visit Forget Me Not Valley. Which I thought was a really, really cool integration. Like, how cool to just bring all of these characters from this other game, this other town, that you know these two towns are connected, and have them visit Forget Me Not Valley. I loved that part of Harvest Moon DS. So in my brain, I was like, you know, at the very least, Cliff is back in this game. I get to romance Cliff again, but in a different town. It just shows that we're meant to be together. And then, one certain thief caught my eye. The new bachelor in Harvest Moon DS Cute, Sky, the Phantom Thief. Sky had the same kind of persona that Steven Stone did, but also the fix me qualities of Cliff. He was cool, he was sleek, he was a thief! That's awesome! However, me, being a do-gooder farmer, I was like, well, I mean, I could marry a thief, but what if, you know, he's like a reformed thief, a Robin Hood character of sorts, and maybe I can make that happen. And so this was the very first Harvest Moon game that I think I spent extensive time online looking at guides on how to properly romance characters in this game. However, romancing characters in Harvest Moon DS and DS Cute is a task and a half. In order to get married in Harvest Moon DS Cute, you need to find enough Harvest Sprites in order to release the Harvest Goddess after she did some pretty bad bullying to the Harvest King, so... And that is a huge task. I believe you need to get 50 sprites, and it's a lot. Because you get them from doing random things like watering enough squares on your farm, or building things, or totally random tasks like fishing in the same spot or something like that. I don't remember exactly, it's been a long time. But the task was big. Not only that, but I feel as though Harvest Moon DS Cute made it so hard for people to like you. You had to be giving them the highest rated items for like, ever, to see even a little bit of progress between the characters. Romancing Sky took forever. It took absolutely, absolutely forever. But it was worth it. Sky's heart events were some of my favorites because you were constantly trying to help townsfolk from preventing him from stealing anything from them because he'd let them know ahead of time. And I just thought that was so cool because then we had these romantic run-ins where in my brain, every time he saw me, he realized maybe I shouldn't be a thief because I only want to steal Alex's heart, which spoiler alert, that is what happens in in the final in the final heart event sort of sort of regardless sky was one that i was absolutely obsessed with again looking up guides frequently thinking about him reading many fan fictions of course and yeah it was it was a pretty tumultuous relationship let's just say <laughs> and yeah the tumultuous courtship ended up being worth it in the end. Definitely one of my favorite Harvest Moon marriage candidates of all time. Even though he's kind of like cheesy and a dork and like not even in a cute way. And he wears like a leopard print jacket. You know, he's still, he's still Sky. And so now we get a little further away from childhood into my teenage years. And it was kind of weird because at this point in time I was dating in real life. So I don't have many very specific 
obsessing over video game character crushes at this point in time, but one I do remember very, very well was Yashiro Tsurugi from Tokyo Mirage Sessions Sharp FE on the Wii U. Yes, I played it on the Wii U and then I rebought it on the Switch. I really love that game. It's a highly underrated RPG in my opinion, and I know some people don't like the idle aesthetic of it, but I really love that game and I really love Yashiro. So while this crush definitely did not go nearly as deep as my childhood ones because, you know, I I realized that maybe that wasn't the right way to handle crushes anymore. <laughs> I loved this guy. Now, a little warning for some very light spoilers. I'm not really gonna talk too much about the story, but I am gonna talk about the character a little bit. So your warning is now. Yashiro kind of starts out as kind of a rival character, but you almost get the inclination that you know he's going to join the party later on. You just don't know under what circumstances. And me, Getting that feeling knew that I was going to be able to do some of the social events with him like some of the other characters. And I could not wait. Yashiro has such a cool look. He's got a purple suit. He's very tall. He looks like an older version of Death the Kid from Soul Eater, which was the show I really enjoyed at the beginning of high school. And I was smitten. He also had two different colored eyes, which is a trait I really love in characters. Very, very cool. And just, he also had the best song out of all the characters. This is another cool guy, but like too cool for school kind of character that I liked, which that's definitely where I started to really drift towards. I enjoyed the nice guys, the ones who like were troubled, but you know, it wasn't anything too crazy. This guy was a straight up asshole and I loved it. <laughs> so as I progressed through the game and eventually Yashiro coming over to my side, I took in every single social event I could with this character. I won't really talk about his scenes because I think they're better experienced on your own, especially after the buildup of getting to meet this character, but he really did become one of my favorite characters in that entire game. And again, his song is one of the best ones in my opinion. I think it's very cool and very fun. But ultimately, yeah, I this is definitely more of a, this guy's kind of a hottie kind of crush, and that's okay, you know? Sometimes that's what happens. Then branching more into college and adulthood, yes, we all know he was coming. We all knew he was on this list. Dimitri from Fire Emblem Three Houses. I have talked a lot about Three Houses on this channel, and I've talked a decent amount about Dimitri, but I don't think I've really talked about why I love Dimitri so much, and if I have, well, I guess you're gonna hear it again. Same deal, there might be some light spoilers for Dimitri's character arc, but I won't try to do any big specific ones. Specifically talking about the Blue Lions, because that's where you really get to know Dimitri the most, as he is the house leader, you see this character grow from this younger, very kind of optimistic, somewhat happy, polite boy, into this twisted, hurt man, and it's just, it's incredible how the seeds get planted and just grown throughout the entire first year of that game. Once you get to the time skip, that's when it really starts to just, it, it's almost like a totally different character. He has become such a different person, and like, I loved Academy Dimitri. I thought, pre-time skip, he was a great guy, and again, seeing him kind of break over time, was very interesting. His premise of having some pain behind his eyes or whatever the line is in the game always intrigued me, which was one of the reasons I was drawn to him, not just as a character, but again, also, he's a fix me boy, he's a fix me boy. I'm not ashamed. But once you get into the time skip, then one, the fix me urges really start to go wild, but also he's just such a complex character. Some people really hate Dimitri. I think part of it is because Dimitri is so popular and people just don't like to like things that are popular. But I think a lot of them also think, why would you like this guy who is so obviously crazy and misguided? And I mean, I think a counter argument is you could say that about most everybody in Three Houses, I think, to some extent. And I think some people just don't get it. He's supposed to be broken and have all of this trauma that's been festering for years and years and years until he just snaps. And yeah, I know this goes back to the fix me people kind of situation. And I think from a character perspective, it's just really interesting seeing that, especially when we get into the time skip and he starts to remember who he has behind him and why he's doing all of this and that it doesn't have to be all about revenge and 
pain. And I think it's, it's a really important kind of cycle of growth between a character. I also, again, very selfishly, I love our little moments that we have between Dimitri and Byleth. I think all of the house leaders have some really interesting scenes with Byleth, but for some reason the Byleth and Dimitri scenes just really just, oh, oh, tore at my heart. Like, it destroyed me. <laughs> and especially if you are doing all the support conversations with Dimitri and just other characters in the Blue Lion's house, or Dimitri with other characters in the Blue Lion's house, you just get this really just overall view of Dimitri as a character. And for me personally, it was really hard to not just fall for this guy. And I mean, fall for this guy. But he was a character I did kind of hyper fixate on, maybe a little too much. But I just thought he was so well written. Chris Hackney did a phenomenal job with the voice acting. It just all fit into place. You had the three points of success for Dimitri. Good character design, good writing, good voice actor. It was just an all around phenomenal package of a character. And it was really hard to move on from Blue Lions to play the other routes. Well, you know, I think Three Houses definitely suffers from the everybody's hot in this game situation, at least for me. Dimitri will always be my number one character in that game. And so Dimitri is still definitely a very prevalent video game crush now in my later life, even though it's been a few years since I played Three Houses. But there have been others, of course. One that I want to give a really cool shout out to, because I don't think I've really talked about this game too much on the channel, Arcadia Fallen. It is an indie visual novel. It's a really great little game, and I love it so much. As as well as I love Michael. You play as an alchemist and this whole game is really based on kind of building your personality through your choices in the story, but there is also romance. And I streamed this game and played a version of it on my own, and when I streamed it I went after Caden, who is voiced by Josija, the same voice as Claude in Three Houses. <laughs> And Caden's romance was really, really, really sweet. His story had a lot to do with being an outsider from society and just learning more about who you are. And it was a really sweet story. But on my own time, I ended up romancing Michael. Michael was always this mischievous, very sassy kind of sorcerer, as a lot of sorcerers ultimately end up being. And something about his way of talking just really lured me in. And I remember, because I was playing these two side by side, and while I was playing on stream, there'd be moments where I was like, oh, I really want to choose the Michael option already, because that's the more that I'm leaning towards, but I had to not because I had already dedicated myself to Caden at that point in time. But yeah, Michael was, I think, the first gaming crush that I had had since Dimitri that it, like affected me mentally for a few days after finishing the game. It took me a little bit before I could go back and play all the other romantic routes, which all of them are very delightful and charming and wonderful in their own way. I've romanced everybody in that game and it's a joy, but Michael just stood out to me, especially once you learn more about his backstory, which I won't spoil, but once you learn more about him and really start to get to talk to him, his scenes get like <laughs> very, very nice. That's all I'm going to say. It's very cool. I like it a lot. And I definitely like there were lines in that game that made me blush, which does not happen very often except for the next example I'm going to give, but that, whoa. <laughs> Plus, I just really like his character design. I like everybody's character design in the game. I really just like the characters. I think they're very well written, but oh man, that was a good one. And it was a total surprise. I think a lot of the time indie games get looked over in this category unless you're Stardew Valley for video game crushes, but this one truly, truly affected me. And I truly encourage, if this sounds like kind of interesting to you, look into Arcadia Fallen. The sequel is also on the horizon too, so you might as well go play the first one. I just really love that game and I really love Galdra Studios who made it, so they're great. They're great. Check it out. And thus that brings us to the present day, where yes, all of these crushes are still very true to my heart. And if I had to really rank them, Dimitri would still be number one. However, my most recent video game crush is probably one that most can guess because I've talked about it a little bit on, on the channel before. A Starian from Baldur's Gate 3. Yes, I'm a simp. I'm basic. I don't care. A Starian is probably the motivation behind me buying Baldur's Gate 3 as soon as I did. I was going to wait 
a lot longer, and with combination of the Ren Faire and seeing so many very enticing, we'll say, Astarian scenes on TikTok, I uh, knew I had to get it. <laughs> Yeah, aside from just really enjoying Astarian and his performance and his aesthetic and all of that, I just think, like Dimitri, his character arc is so good. Again, no spoilers, but Astarian goes through a very big transformation, and that transformation can go one of two ways depending on your choices. And one, I think, is a much better idea for me than the other, which I'm not gonna say what, um, but I think it's just, Astarian as a character goes through so much, and even though you come into each other's lives through random, unlikely circumstances due to being infected with the tadpole, as you get to know him and, you know, make decisions and see him banter with other characters, you just really start to get a good idea of who Astarian is. He's mischievous, of course, he's a bit of an ass, but he also does have a genuine want for connection down there. And I think that's really, really cool to kind of see. And yeah, depending on what you do in the story will affect how he goes about dealing with those feelings and also the feeling of constantly being trapped and not being your own person. Like, I think it's a very relatable kind of story and the writing for Astarian is so, so good. And yeah, I just, I love Astarian as a character so much. And yes, he's cute. Um, the, the, the very, you know, the, the scenes, we'll say, the scenes are very interesting and very good. But those are my seven main video game crushes over the years. I think they kind of have a very similar thread of the I can fix him kind of character, but also with some being cool and mischievous, some being really nice guys, and just overall like transformation in their characters. I really love all of these characters, and I love way more. As I said, there are some that didn't make this list, like Emily from Stardew Valley, and Cordelia from Fire Emblem Awakening. Just a lot. I have a lot. <laughs> Maybe someday I'll make a very comprehensive list of all of the characters that I love. But these are the ones that I think really hit home for me, but yeah. But that's enough about me. Let's get into your video game crushes. This series got the most romantic companions, submissions, I guess we're gonna say it like that, than any other game that anybody had said. And that is Fire Emblem. I think it's no surprise, Fire Emblem with its support conversations, especially in the more recent games, have really taken the world by romantic storm. So it makes sense that there are a lot of submissions from Fire Emblem. So without further ado, let's go through the first big category. At Nathan Finn says, Dimitri from Fire Emblem, three houses forever. And I don't know why, maybe it's the hair. <laughs> I mean, that is fair. I think when Dimitri first came out, everybody was like, ha, spaghetti hair, which is kind of true. But, time skip Dimitri, shaggy long hair that you can put in a ponytail, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. See, it goes back to the ponytail that I was saying earlier. 90s handheld gamer, Manuela from Fire Emblem Three Houses. Just because she's fine and seems like a kind person under her depression and messiness. And Lapis from Engage, because she is a really humble, cute, and feminine personality. Yeah, both of those are really nice. I love Manuela as a character. Voiced by Veronica Taylor, the same voice as the original Ash Ketchum in Pokemon, fun fact. And yeah, Manuela is a really cool character. Not one that I really would romance romance, but like one that I want to be BFFs with, which platonic love is important as well. Jay from Cold Nights Gaming says, Marianne, always Marianne. Marianne is definitely one of my favorite characters from The Houses. I love her story so much. And she's just a sweetheart. Like, she's so good. Abby4115, Claude from Fire Emblem Three Houses. Honestly, he was my favorite character from the moment I first saw him, and then I grew to have the biggest crush on him. I really love his personality and how funny he is. He's really handsome too, and I loved his confession at the end. Claude's confession is one of my absolute favorites in the game. I think it's so sweet, and I'm not gonna spoil it, but it's it's really, really cute. If you haven't romanced Claude and don't really intend to, look up his support conversations because they're really good. Cozy Fedgy, who was a big inspiration for this video, so please go check out her channel as well. Claude, he has my heart, absolutely. David DD1216, 
Uh, all, all David sent was the Cordelia My Beloved GIF on Twitter, and that's all I needed to know. Cordelia is definitely one of my favorite Awakening characters, alongside Krom. I, like, I know Krom's kind of basic, but I really like Krom, but Cordelia was like, when I think Awakening, Cordelia is at the forefront of my mind. I love her. <laughs> And the final only Fire Emblem response from Electrifying Penguin 3343, Ninian from Fire Emblem Blazing Sword. I ship her with Elliewood, of course, but I still like her design and character a lot. She's real cute. And rolled a lot for her wedding alt on the Heroes app. <laughs> That's fair. I don't play Fire Emblem Heroes anymore, but I, I can understand the need. Our second biggest category was Pokemon, which it's nice to have some like solidarity in the Pokemon crush department because I think Pokemon has some really cool character designs, especially across all of the games. So it's nice to know I'm not alone. Kyle22, Serena from Pokemon X and Y. She's super cute and her outfits are amazing. English Muffin OK, which is probably the most relatable of the Pokemon comments. So I can't just say Cynthia from Pokemon because I want her to step on me. Muffin, you absolutely can say that and I support it. Cynthia is great. Definitely, definitely one of my favorite Pokemon characters. Super cute. I love her so much. I love her design. I think she's awesome. She's just, again, she's kind of got the same thing that Steven does where she's just that cool Pokemon character. And Vaughn Xavier Haynes. OMG, mine was Dahlia from Pokemon Platinum Battle Frontier. Nine-year-old me was literally in love with her. <laughs> again, Dahlia is a really cool one. I think an underrated character for sure. And at this point, I got way too tired to continue to put them all in categories based on the series they're from. So we just have everybody else. <laughs> Albert Rostano, I was at the right age to have a long-term crush on Laura Croft. More recently, Bayonetta comes to mind. You mean, you mean Bayonetta. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Laura Croft, I think, is definitely a popular long-standing one for sure. Joshua B. Croft 3603, Gragas from League of Legends. Need I explain? <laughs> Tony Quinn, well, Agua from, from Kingdom Hearts, specifically Birth by Sleep, my first waifu in anything animated. I guess it's partially her gentleness, fierce protection of her friends, and the fact that her VA, Willa Holland, has a slightly raspy voice. Sorry if that last part is venturing into X-rated territory. I don't think so, but I definitely think Aqua is another really, really popular one. I know TJ, my partner, really loved Aqua. He's very partial to blue-haired characters in games, um, but Aqua was definitely, like, the first one for him, so I, I get it. I definitely... Plant Boy! Link! 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 Uh, specifically with the Twilight Princess Link gif. I think if I were to pick a Link from all of Zelda, Twilight Princess Link would probably be top design-wise. I think partially because he just looks a lot more mature than, like, you know, Toon Link, uh, Link's Awakening remake Link, you know? <laughs> like, and, you know, being an adult, I think that is who I would mostly be attracted to. Joe Nado, I used to think I was a Tifa guy when I played the original Final Fantasy VII, but I was always lying to myself. Jessie has always been the girl for me, and the Final Fantasy VII remake just cemented that for me. TBH, I'm pretty sure I got more emotional over losing Jessie than I did losing Aerith. Honorable mention to Carmen Sandiego. <laughs> I did care something about how mysterious she was, and she was the epitome of playing hard to get. <laughs> I I am definitely an Aerith girl through and through for Final Fantasy VII, but I, I do understand the love of Jessie. Continuing on that, Sarah Lloyd also commented under that same comment, saying Jessie was a foundational crush, absolutely devastated. Oh no, crush is not the right word for this specific example. Moving on. <laughs> The Mad Belmont, Jill Valentine without a doubt. Yes, I am aware of how fitting this pick is, <laughs> but Jill is not only gorgeous, but she doesn't take any crap from anyone, and after Resident Evil 1 at least, she'll walk straight up to a zombie and shoot him in the face with little to no hesitation. We love that in a woman. Rimsky Brosikov, Gale, from Baldur's Gate. He's a dork, that's all. Agreed. Gale is definitely the dorkiest, I think, of that entire group, and I really do love Gale. Uh, Yo Chris Nelson says, the great fairy from Ocarina of Time. Really? <laughs> and, you know, I, I went into this being like, I'm not gonna shame anybody's crushes, you know, we all have crushes for different really reasons, but I, I wanna know why. You didn't tell me why, I wanna know why. <laughs> I mean, sure, I, I'm sure those, those polygonals, um, <laughs> would be very, very intriguing. I'm sure I'm intrigued as your reasoning. Please respond. <laughs> Hannah J426, 
Haru from Persona 5, Tobi from Nier, yes, and Mitsuru from Persona 3. Mitsuru is definitely one that's been like taking Twitter by storm since Reload came out and I'm all for it. Tobi is definitely like my number one crush of a character from a game that I have not played. I love to be. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Alstfan9409, Lyric from Vambrace Cold Sword. I love her. I love the game, so I bought the collector's edition for the Switch. It has bad reviews, but to me, it's a great RPG. And hey, that's all that matters. If you got value out of it and you liked it, then that is the most important thing. I did look up this character because I had never heard of her before, but very cute design. Very, very cute design. Mark ass cop. The one that jumps at me the most is Elena from Pandora's Tower. I mean, the entire point of the game is to cure her from a curse that'll turn her into a monster, and the times where you're not in the towers is spent hanging out with her and increasing her affinity level. The higher it is, the better your ending. And add in her caring and endearing personality, they got me. I was determined to save her from her curse. I love that kind of situation. Like, again, it's, it's almost like a variation of the Fix Me Boy, but like, different. You still have reason to want to get to know this character more, and I really like it. I like that your affinity ties into your ending. Purple Mist 7, this is a fun question. The closest I've come to having a video game crush would have to be Ganondorf from The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. I loved his design, especially in his official character art, as that is the true reflection of his canonical design opposed to the blocky N64 graphics. What are you talking about? Polygonals! Polygonals! <laughs> How threatening and powerful he came across. I'm still making my way through Tears of the Kingdom, so I haven't yet seen him in his full grandeur yet, although I look forward to. <laughs> yeah, I, I've always been a Ganondorf fan as a character. I just really like him as a villain. Uh, Tears of the Kingdom Ganondorf, I was like, yes. <laughs> and then in 10, Josh, Daddy Rex from Future Redeemed. He got such a big glow up. He's the same Rex we know and love, but mature and hot now. <laughs> so true. A Future Redeemed is definitely one of the biggest reasons I went back and played Xenoblade 2 and gave it a second chance, but I'd be lying if I said that seeing what Rex becomes didn't help inspire that as well. <laughs> Hey, you know, I'm being honest here, I'm being honest. Gato Rakuto, do I even need to explain with the Bayonetta gif? Again, Bayonetta. Still in the dude, I've got two for the same reason. Leon S. Kennedy from Resident Evil and Anne Takamaki from Persona 5. Both are people put in terrible situations out of their control and yet remain faithful to their upstanding morals and earnest heroism. Both are extremely genuine and kind slash hot. Definitely agree. Definitely agree. Sarah Lloyd, again. Renoa, because I'm basic AF. I was really thrilled to crack open that manual and see she was 5'3.5, same as me. <laughs> I really love that reason. Jessica, XR2CT. I'm an Otome game lover, so there are a lot of 2D men I love. Yang from Pio, uh, Pio Fiore. I never know how to say, like, say that. Pio Fiore? Let me know if that's how you pronounce it comes to mind. Vito Libido Faro from Prince of Persia Sands of Time. Mr. Tangent 0081, Fina from Grandia. She's the adventure that Justin wanted to be and learning about her made her more attractive. Oh, Flame Burnham. Grandia is on my list. I really, really, really need to play Grandia, but I know this character and I think she's very cute. I like her a lot. Miyamo Allison, Phoenix Wright. So, okay. Maybe not Phoenix Wright for me, but Edgeworth was gonna be on this list. I am a big Miles Edgeworth fan. <laughs> I love him a lot. Again, that brooding kind of guy. Like, I, Nintendo Gamer Gal, Lunar Silver Song Alex. All he wanted was an adventure and he ends up having to save the world and find his love. A very noble cause. I like it. Very cute character design of this character as well. Sith Scott Morgan from Dragon Age Origins. I loved the dialogue and the sass she gave to her mother and Alistair. Very good character that hooked me on the game during my first playthrough. Plus, as she starts to slowly care for the player character. It was a good buildup. Abby, L-I-5-J-E, Shinjiro from Persona 3, specifically Portable. His social link in Portable literally left me smiling so stupidly, he's so kind and caring, and his Tardos dialogue literally left me a gasp. <laughs> that was in caps, so I had to read it like that. He also helped me get over my really toxic crush of four years, so, yeah, he's like the best. I definitely understand video game characters being like a comfort for real life relationships, not just like romantic relationships, but friendships and stuff too. Like, you again, you really get a cat attached to these characters to the point where it almost feels like you know them 
in a little way, and they really can be healing. I think it's something that's really, really special about video game characters more than any other media, honestly. Vernal Bug, Leon from Resident Evil. The game developers knew what they were doing when they were designing him. <laughs> Definitely agree. Don Johnson, 7768. It's gotta be Trip from Enslaved Odyssey to the West. A genius, kind, and babe. <laughs> Enemy Zero Studio says, Felicia from Darkstalker series. Kind and goofy cat girl, I'm in. I don't really know much about Darkstalkers, but I've seen character designs and we have another submission from the same same series later on but man those characters look cool i really like their design nms0805 if i'm being honest i have a special place in my heart for sidon from both breath of the wild and tears of the kingdom so kind noble and that damn smile always gets me when i found out he had a fiance i was plotting her demise yeah yeah sidon also almost made it on this list <laughs> I'm a big Sidon fan. I really like Sidon. I don't even know where it started, but like I really, really, really like Sidon. So I definitely understand the plotting of the demise. It it sucks though because his fiance, who I'm blanking on her name right now, is so sweet. She's very sweet and very kind, and like she's pretty cool. I wish we could spend more time with her, but still, I I love Sidon. Easy mode nerd, Abby from The Last of Us Part 2. It's Jacob J96. Uh, Leliana from Dragon Age, Inquisition specifically, but across the series. And IDK if I'm a mix of Mercedes and Dorothea from Three Houses, or if I'm in love with them. Also understand that. Sometimes it's like, well, I really like this character and I see a lot of traits in those characters that I see myself, but also am I in love with them? Misbehave Nathan Drake for obvious reasons. Mad Kaiser, mine would definitely be Shion from Tales of Arise. Everything from her elegant and beautiful design, her terrific voice performance from Erica Lindbeck, her tragic but endearing story and character growth, both in the main game and the DLC expansion, and her solid but overall fun play style. Yeah, she's a very cute character. I've seen pictures. I've never played Tales of Arise, but I definitely really like the character's design. Salsa Monkey 65, Crow Armbrust from Trails of Cold Steel. So charming yet mysterious. Funny without being the butt of every joke. And handsome and strong. The total package. <laughs> and finally, we have, come on, come on, 007, Tifa Lockhart, a classic. Hold a special place in my heart being the first JRPG I ever played. And can I add Morrigan too from Darkstalkers? Succubus, she got a spell on me. <laughs> so that's all I had submitted to me before I recorded. If for whatever reason I missed somebody or you submitted after the fact, please let me know in the comments down below and tell me again your crush. I'd love to hear it. And if you weren't featured in this, also tell me your crushes down below. Again, I love learning about people's video game crushes, as silly as some of them might be or for really true, genuine reasons that others might be. I think it's a really, really cool thing to think about. So let me know. But I hope you enjoyed this very wacky and silly video. I literally got this idea yesterday morning and I was like, we gotta go, we gotta get this ready. <laughs> and if you did like it, be sure to to hit that like button, give it a thumbs up. I'd super duper appreciate it. And if you're not already subscribed, maybe consider subscribing. We just hit 5,000 subscribers, which is ridiculous. That's absolutely bewildering. And I just cannot believe it. So thank you so, 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 so much. I cannot wait to see this community grow even further. But that is going to do it for me on this Valentine's Day. I am going to go stare at a picture of Dimitri for the next two to 12 hours. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Boop.